and welcome to another episode of the Studio 78 Podcast. I am your host, Nishé from NishéSnow.com. Welcome. Today in the studio, I have Emily from The Boss Project, formerly known as Think Creative Collective. She's one of the co-owners. Her and Abigail have created this amazing empire. If you haven't already, check out their podcast, The Strategy Hour. They talk numbers. They talk about things that worked and have not worked with different launches in their business. It's really good. But today we're going to zero in on two things. The first thing is just like knowing when to pivot and like shift in your business. So Emily walks us through how she was a wedding photographer and then her and Abigail got together and they did like some design and branding work for companies and then they shifted their business to more marketing and strategy and they most recently rebranded their business and then narrowed the focus a little bit more. And so I think this is really important for any business because once you get going, you really need to figure out when to shift. And so we talk about, you know, how they realize like, okay, maybe it's it's time to move the business in a slightly different direction, even if it might be risky. And then the second half of the podcast, we're just talking a little bit about uh, the virtual summit they put on. And this year's theme is the Product Powerhouse Summit. So it's all about, you know, really helping people who are selling products. So if that is you, you should definitely sign up. And that is over at nishaysnow.com slash boss project. And I will be actually one of the presenters. So you should definitely sign up. It's a hundred percent free. And I will be talking about how to organize your life to make time for your passion. And that I feel like is the number one question I get. And if you guys have been following me long enough, you know that I used to sell laser cut light switch plates. And so because of the process involved with that, I really had to be organized with my life. So I'm I'm really for my presentation using that period of my life in and you know what I do now to really help people f- to figure out how to make that space for the things that they love. But anywho, let's get started. Here's Emily. Hello, Emily, and welcome to the Studio 78 podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah. Can you just tell the listeners about you before you and Abigail started started the Boss Project? Yeah, that's a that's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> how much time do we have? How how far deep do you want me to go? Um, so I'll go just before we we really started. So um, Boss Project really has only been founded for a couple of months. Um, it shifted from our business Think Creative Collective, which existed since 2015. Um, we met that same year in a Facebook group. We both had our own service-based businesses. I was a photographer and had kind of shifted working with more um, like lifestyle bloggers and creatives. So styling sessions for their blog, helping them like with their images and making them in their images so they could you know, charge more for the partnerships that they were working on. And then I realized, oh man, I'm really loving chatting strategy and helping them with their Instagram growth or their email marketing or whatever it might be. And so then people started paying me for that. Mm. So then I went into a Facebook group with other business owners and Abby found me there. I found her there. We both just kind of hung out on this um, thread where we were starting this. You remember when like Instagram pods were a thing? Yeah. You would like comment. Yeah. So we like started the first Instagram pod. <laughs> and because we had similar audiences or who we hoped to work with in the online space. And so we joined this pod with like six other women and Abby and I just connected. And this is in like uh, March of 2015. Mm. And about two weeks later, she reached out to me and was like, hey, um, I was going to host this webinar and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. (laughs) Is this something you can help me with? And I had hosted all of one webinar before this. So clearly I was an expert and I knew everything about (laughs) webinars. And I was like, sure, let's do it. 
And here's another idea. I'm going to do it with you and we're going to pitch my course. And if you add value to the course, like some of your own modules, we can just split it 50, 50. Mm. And for some reason she was like, sure, let's do it. (laughs) And so that was kind of like our first, um, it was like an affiliate. It was a partnership. It was a little bit of a collaboration. And that very quickly over the next couple of weeks and months morphed into like, Hey, do we want to just like join forces and, and make a really big marketing boutique together? Mm, mm. No, I love that. And, and question for you, because I feel like this is sometimes a debate, debate in the entrepreneurial space. It sounded like to me, but correct me if I'm wrong, even right before you guys began and really even formed your business, you were making money right from the start. hundred percent. That is something we adamantly believe in. We are proud founders of a bootstrap business, so using as little monies as you can to actually start making money. Um, And this is something that we teach our students and, and really help kind of cultivate in our community as well. I feel like every single new week that goes by, there's some new shiny thing that Mm -hmm. everyone needs, right? You need this new software, this app or this tool or whatever it might be. And and quite frankly, like you don't even need a website, like you don't need anything. Right. And so we had started like, I mean, my photography website was garbage, um, <laughs> but I was landing clients with relationships. And so I didn't need anything other than myself to land those deals. And Abby, same thing. Like she was coming from the corporate world. And so any of her portfolio was the exact opposite of what she wanted to really be working on in, in her new business. And so she didn't have anything really to showcase. So there's really no point for a website. And so any invoice that we sent for like two years was really just through PayPal. So you don't need anything. And then at what point, you know, because both of you guys were coming back from coming from different backgrounds. So how did you determine like, okay, what is going to be like the sole purpose, you know, and focus for Think, Think Creative Collective? Yeah. So when we first joined, we, you know, we decided to merge in, uh, September of 2015. And at that point, you know, we were offering one-on-one services. I had my course. Yes. I had sold it to like 12 people. Um, but I loved it and I was kind of cultivating that audience and now it was a we, so Abby had contributed her knowledge to that program. Um, but our bread and butter was still clients and we, you know, I was doing photography and she was doing graphic design, marketing, and a little bit of branding. And so those two go hand in hand. And since I had really started shifting more towards lifestyle photography and what I called, um, like lifestyle marketing headshots. And so, you know, the trend now of everything you see on stock sites where like you're drinking a cup of coffee and you're like (laughs) laughing at your laptop, like, I'm not going to say I started that trend, (laughs) but I was on the very, very front end of that trend. Um, and so that made sense to offer it to our current clients or any client that Abby had worked with. So really we just joined the stuff that we were already doing into giant marketing packages. And I think initially in our headspace, we were like, is this going to turn into some really huge marketing agency, right? Where we're able to Mm -hmm. offer copywriting and, you know, whatever else that you need. Um, or is is it going to shift? And we didn't know at the time, but we just kind of leaned into it and we're like, Hey, we are now able to like triple our prices because we're offering photography or we're offering website design. And let's just kind of feel that out and see where that goes. Mm. And so how did you morph into the business you are now, because of course you guys started the strategy hour podcast, Mm -hmm. your courses look a little different now, like your resource section might be a little different now. So how did you go, you know, shift your business, you know, over time? Well, it it wasn't over time. It was really quick. Um, Mm. we, (laughs) I am, um, Abby's like a sit and think about it for a long time and make very, very smart strategic decisions based on like data and making sure she's safe and secure. And I'm the like middle finger to the air. Let's just do it because I'm (laughs) over it. And so we kind of balance each other out a little bit. However, I think I kind of won in our speed and how we shifted. So Mm. We got together in September. We were landing clients, landing clients. I mean, like a $25,000 client, a 15000 I mean, not small yeah. clients, right? Yeah. Um, and we were like a kind of niching ourselves down into um, like working with 
um, really, well, they were big, but like local hand, not handmade, but, um, artisan food companies. So Mm. like salsa companies, um, juice, like those really yummy juice press things that you drink. And so Mm. we were doing their branding, their photography, their websites. And so we're kind of like carving out a little niche for ourselves. And in January, so not that many months after September, I kind of woke up and was like, if I have to pick up my camera and shoot one more jar of pickles again, (laughs) I'm going to throw the jar of pickles through a window. I just didn't do it anymore. And I had already, you know, and this is an entirely other conversation about your creative doubt and your, your skill set. And I knew and believed at that time, I am a better strategist, business person, marketing person who can teach other people than I am a photographer Mm. and better at business than I am at editing. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so I had grown successfully and I had made my own successful photography business before I even met Abby that was paying the bills. Um, and then we kind of took it in a, in a different direction, but I really just couldn't do it anymore. And so um, in like the last tail end of December of 2015, we started, um, we had been blogging from day one. So for almost an entire year at that point. And we had kind of realized that the things that were getting clicked on Pinterest were business and how to and productivity and all of these things. And so we decided in December of 2015 to open up our first membership site. And in 2015, membership site weren't really a thing. And mm. the the ability to charge people on a monthly reoccurring subscription was impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, Teachable didn't do it. Like Member Vault wasn't a thing. Member Space wasn't a thing. All of these really cool tools that exist now were not a thing. And so for some reason, we were still like, whatever, we'll figure it out. And so we put up some janky like paywall to like block people from viewing a page unless they were a member. I mean, it was just like super not secure, (laughs) not the best thing, but we used it. And what we realized come February was that like creating monthly content was not sustainable and Mm. was going to burn us out really quickly. And so we decided to turn that particular thing into like a nine module program and sold it as the biz chick co-op many years ago. It does not exist anymore. (laughs) Um, but that was basically the formation of our second course because we had already had the one that I had launched, which was called pricing for profit. When I launched it, we rebranded it to the money-making creative. And so at that point we had two programs. So in January, 2016, We took down every uh, way to contact us on our website. We took down our packages about our services. We took down our portfolio. We took down everything and just completely shifted the conversation to education. And so it was a little bit of like kind of running to catch up with yourself because if you have a $25,000 client, your next month, you're not going to make $25,000 in course sales. Like that's mm. not going to happen. Right. It's a lot harder to make $25,000 <laughs> in course sales than it is to land a $25,000 client. Mm. And so there was a couple of months of, oh crap, what did we do? Right. Um, <laughs> but I will, like, I will, you know, caveat this with, we were both very lucky and had supportive partners in all of this and Mm. two income households and no children at the time. And so Mm. like we were coming from a place of extreme privilege to even do something that scary. So I Mm -hmm. know that that's not everyone's reality. So don't think that you guys should just like quit what you're doing tomorrow, (laughs) Um, but that is what we did. So Wow. And then, you know, I think like a a lot of times what people struggle with, like you said, you guys realized like your jam was marketing and strategy. Mm -hmm. Like, do you have any tips for some of the businesses out here? They might be amazing at what they do, but sometimes I feel like (sighs) they're lacking in that area. Like, are there any things that they need to think about? Like some things that worked for you guys that maybe they can apply? Yeah. So one strategy that we we employed really early on, and, and I think it really helped TCC, the growth of that company, um, happen as rapidly as it did. So when you're in client land specifically, and this could be anything, you could be shipping out orders, you could be behind the chair cutting hair, you could be on the phone with all of your coaching clients. It doesn't matter what you do, um, but you're busy in that world. You're creating, right? You're doing the thing that needs to be sold. 
And when you're doing that, I like to say that you have your creative hat on, right? Mm -hmm. You're thinking of maybe new opportunities to upsell your client or your customer, or like maybe even what could be included in your packages. And you're doing a little bit of business thinking with that creative hat, but mostly you're just doing the thing that you need to do to deliver the thing to your client. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you also have to put on your business hat and your business hat can only sit on your head if you take your creative hat off. It doesn't mean that creative hat doesn't come back on the next day or the next week, but you have, you cannot wear two hats at once. You just can't. And Mm. so the business hat is that forward thinking hat. Okay. What is my content strategy right now? And how is this really targeting my ideal customer and and is going to get me reoccurring clients, customers, or sales? Okay. What is my social media game? Okay. What is this whole thing about email marketing? And I'm not saying think about those things at the same time, Pick one, right? And mm-hmm. truly, truly pick it apart and dig deep into, okay, how does this thing actually move my business forward? It's not me doing the work. It's not me responding to an email. It's not me sending an invoice. It's not any of those things. It's moving the needle in my business forward. And so what this looks like truly in our day to day is we had five days of work and all five days went to clients. Well, there's no moving the needle forward if all five days are client facing. Mm. And so we were very, very firm with ourselves for about, uh, well, when we were specifically moving from courses in January, we implemented this, even when we still had to fulfill client orders and needs. And we, we had a couple reoccurring clients at that time, but not, not that many. Um, we picked Friday. So you just pick a day of the week and that is your business hat day. You take off your creative hat, put on your business hat. You cannot do anything for clients and customers when you have your business hat on. You can't. Some of you, this is only going to be like an hour a day and that's all you truly have. Some, maybe four hours, a half day, if you're lucky and you can get a full day of business work in that you're rocking it. Right. Mm -hmm. But over time, that one day is going to shift to a day and a half and then two days. And as clients start to fall off, the business, the business growth and the, the forward thinking of your business is going to start to lay its roots and show the, you know, effects of your efforts. And then it'll be two days and then it might be three days and on and on and on till maybe you're delivering something passive like a course or you're consulting virtually or you're doing one to many instead of one to one. Mm. No, I like that. Cause then it's like, you're really just focusing on, you know, putting yourself out there, doing your ads, doing yes. your interviews, doing whatever yes. that is going to give you that more exposure. hundred oh, percent. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about boss projects. So yeah. what made you guys go from TCC to boss mm-hmm. project <laughs> and then yep. from boss project to doing a virtual <laughs> summit? <laughs> um, okay. So first of all, think creative collective is a mouthful. We've determined that it's really <laughs> long to spell. If I had to type hello at think collective.com, which was our old email one more time. I, again, <laughs> I'm the person that's like about to throw something through a window when I'm done, I'm done. And I want it to be changed. And so I was like coming to that realization, but more than that, deeper than that, our bigger picture than that, you know, Abby and I sat down in 2000. 17, even the end of 2017 and all of 2018. And we were like, WTF is TCC doing? Like, what is its purpose? Why is it here? What's it going to be doing next year and three years and five years? And what do we want our role in that to be? Mm. And we realized that a couple of things needed to shift. How we were selling needed to shift because we were on the brink of burnout again. Mm. Um, our type of audience, like the, the, the camaraderie of that, the energy of that needed to shift um, because it was burning us out and making us feel drained instead of fulfilled. Um, And the community aspect of like our team and and what we were bringing resource-wise to our audience needed to shift because we were on the brink of burnout, having to be the, the only people creating content and putting out new stuff for, for our audience. And, you know, our entire business had been built on, we learn it, we implement it, we see success in it, we teach it. And Mm. you can only do that for so long until you're either way far ahead of the people who are still in your audience. And they're like, I don't need to learn how to bring on an employee. Like I'm never doing that. Mm. Um, And so you're kind of run out of things to teach or you just get tired of like doing that same old formula. Mm -hmm. And so we had kind of for two years sat and thought about a summit, right? A virtual summit. What could we do to, to bring people together, to teach people and really us not have anything 
to do with it other than host it and like bring the people to the stage and then market Mm. it and sell it and all that stuff, which is where we thrive and where we're really good. And so we kind of thought about the idea for summer for over two years Mm. until in about July of 2018, we had someone on our podcast who we did a whole episode on how to start your first virtual summit. And she just made it seem so easy. (laughs) And she had this amazing process and this workflow and it was profitable for her first summit. And we're like, dude, we can do that. And so within like four weeks, we started having signups for our very first summit, which was in November of 2018. Yeah. Um, And we reached over 2 million people with that summit, had almost Mm. 12,000 people sign up and we made over $60,000. So I was like, all right, so this was worth it. (laughs) (laughs) And so for that summit, I'm going to back up a little bit. um, We decided to test the name Boss Project. So our very first summit under what everyone knew as Think Creative Collective up until that point, we were like, hey, come to our new summit, Boss Project Summit. And we Mm. were like, okay, let's kind of measure the reaction to the name. Let's measure people's confusion. Let's see if they realize it's us or do they not care that it's us. You know, if they feel like we have nothing to do with it, do people still come? Um, And of course they did. No one actually cares about us. And so (laughs) we made this summit. We called it Boss Project and it reached a crap ton of people, right? And so Mm. we were like, cool, that kind of gives us the confidence and truly defined the meaning and the feeling for us of what we wanted that name to be. And so Mm. we rebranded as our entire company as Boss Project and now Boss Project hosts various summits and our next summit which is happening on April 9th, is Product Powerhouse, hosted by Boss Project. Neat. Wow. That was boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, um, So, yeah. So, can you just tell the listeners a little bit about, you know, some of the speakers that are going to be at this year's summit and then, you know, what type of businesses are perfect for this summit and, you know, why it's for them. Yeah. Yeah. So our first summit we had was, you know, we kind of, we didn't know what we were doing and we want to just kind of start out with a bang. And so it was a very general, we called it a beginner business series. And so it was four days and it was just targeted for literally everyone in our audience. You come and learn something. It's a variety of stuff. Some of the stuff's going to be really applicable to you. Some of it might not be. Well, Mm. over the course of, we're going on four years now of business, um, we have for some reason developed almost 45% of our audience are physical product based people. Mm. I don't know how that happened because we don't sell physical products. <laughs> um, but they have somehow been able to love what we're putting out, take the strategies that we do, you know, put out into the world that are mostly for service based people and tweak them. And they have seen tremendous success. We've seen a multiple six figure Etsy shops thrive from our courses. Um, I, I mean like it's bananas. And so we knew there was something there, but we like, we like to teach from experience. And so we didn't feel like we could actually provide a course or a program or anything for these product people because we didn't know that world and this is an entirely different world. And so we decided let's serve these people who've been sitting here waiting patiently for almost four years for a resource Mm. specifically designed for them. So it's product powerhouse for a reason because it talks specifically to product-based people. Now, Mm. 99% of the talks are really geared towards physical product-based people. There is one talk specifically that talks about digital clientele. It's one of my favorites. It's from the women behind Black Girl Curls on Instagram. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah. And it's their conversation about how to get behind the chair and grow a digital clientele in a, in a profitable community. So that's mm-hmm. one that kind of like marries the line of service and product and digital. Um, but if you're a product person specifically, this is 100% for you. It doesn't matter if you're just kind of dipping your toes. So we're going to have, it's a three day event and it's all online and it's a hundred percent free. And so day one kind of starts out with the foundations, right? Let's make sure that your product is serving your audience. Is it something that they actually want? How are you marketing? How are you talking about this product? How can you tie emotion to a physical thing? And so there's an entire talk that's all about like vulnerability and marketing and really digging into why your people need your thing, even if it's as simple as a coffee mug, right? Mm, right. And so 
day two, we're going into going social and really, really launching your shop and getting set up on Instagram or YouTube or Pinterest and all of the amazing places that are going to help really jumpstart your brand. So we have um, Beatrice from Bila Bomb who has a crap ton of followers on her YouTube <laughs> channel and has been able to really, really sell a bunch of her product that way and get an audience that loves her and loves what she's putting out. Um, day three, we're going into the kind of scaling up. And so if you have an existing product-based business, there's definitely going to be conversations all the days for you, but day three is specifically where you're going to want to hang out. If you're interested in, okay, what does that community look look like? What does scaling up look like? What does launching with ease look like? How can I plan my year if my product launches better? What are some systems that I could utilize? Um, we have some incredible people. One of our students, actually, Jordan Denae, she, um, has watched how we have built a community over the years. And with her physical product-based business, she's based in New York. She has geek chic apparel. She mm. has built an amazing community, an amazing community where they now have a quarterly magazine that goes out. They have subscription boxes, fan clubs, everything. And she has completely oh, taken wow. that advice from, you know, creating like an in-person event or, or an in-person experience with a service-based business. Cause that's what we taught her. Um, but she's now teaching you guys specifically on how to do that for a product business. So, I mean, there's everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, there's like a, some amazing, amazing, amazing speakers. So yeah, I highly encourage anyone listening, definitely go check it out. It's absolutely free. And then you can even choose to like pay to get access to it yes. for, you know, so yeah, yeah, right after it. Because a lot of times what I like to do too is go back to something like sometimes mm -hmm. you want to watch something twice because then you'll like take notes and then you're like what did they say and how can I do the steps you know I've done that with uh like Skillshare courses and other kind yeah. of courses so I love that you guys are providing that options option yeah. for people too and I'm sure there's a link in the show notes or something for you guys to go to to click and go register you can get your free ticket what that gets you is access to all three days um for 100 percent free but you only get access to the videos for 24 hours. And so when the first one pops up, come the next morning when we drop the next keynote, that first keynote's gonna expire unless you have your all access pass. So on the thank you page or in your email, once you confirm and you get registered, you're gonna be prompted to snag that all access pass. And the price varies. I'm not exactly sure when you guys are listening to this right now, um, but you can see it on the confirmation page and the thank you page. So just click that register snag it because it gets you lifetime access to every single session, keynote and breakout. So we have over 26 sessions, eight keynotes and 16 breakouts. So there's a lot of material. It's almost 30 hours worth of content. It also gets you an entrance into our mega biz growth giveaway where yeah. I think we're up to now over 30 winners. So <laughs> the things in that giveaway, which you guys can also see on the website, um, you are, it's going to blow your mind. There are court, like actual courses inside of this giveaway you could win. There's one-on-one -on -one consults, there's eBooks, there's PDFs, there's templates, everything. And how we do the giveaway is kind of different than what everyone else does. Typically you see these really big bundle giveaways and there's one winner and that one winner wins the whole pot. Well, we think that's kind of not fun. And so <laughs> for every single prize we have in there, we pull a specific winner. And so you ha your chances of winning are drastically higher. Um, and then you also get access to a secret freebie vault. So uh, for the public, every single speaker is offering an amazing freebie underneath their video and you, everyone can snag it, but there's also a secret freebie vault just for all access pass holders. And so there's going to be extra hidden stuff in there. And then of course your presentation. Oh my goodness. Yes. So I am teaching how to organize your life to make time for your passion. I yes. hope you guys join me over there. I'm going to be pulling from my laser cut light switch days, which were banana pants because I was, going to the tech shop before it went bankrupt. I was coming home and sanding uh, the light switch plates. I would then have to ship them out. Life was a little crazy when I was selling uh -huh. those products, but I made it happen. And so I'm drawing from that experience to really give you guys a plan to be able to do that too. So nishaysnow.com slash boss project is where you can sign up to hear my talk. Yes. 
Yeah. I love it. Yes. Snag your tickets. Yes. Well, very cool. I am excited and uh, I have a lot of um, product-based businesses that also listen to the Studio 78 podcast. So I think this will really be what they need in order to like start generating more revenue and yes. figuring out like how to move the needle, you know, yes. as we were talking this about. This is your business hat time. So yeah. <laughs> come and yeah. learn this with us. For sure. Well, um, can you just tell the listeners like, you know, where to find you guys, the Boss yeah. Project? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we're Boss Project everywhere. Um, You can find us on Instagram. That's where we mostly hang out at Boss Project. If you scroll on our highlights, you'll see a section that's about Abigail and about Emily. We both have our own personal Instagram feeds as well. Um, So if you want to see the crazy antics of my toddler, um, (laughs) my inability to keep plants alive, that's everything that's (laughs) happening on my Instagram over at Emily Says. And then Abigail Says is sharing... Um, and meal planning and beagle love and hopefully gardening soon as the weather comes. Her and her husband have an amazing home vegetable garden. It's stunning. Um, so yeah, we are both there on Instagram. You of course can find us at bossproject.com. Our blog archive has over 300 blog posts for you to scroll through. And then our podcast, since you love listening to podcasts, <laughs> we are on the strategy hours. So you can find us on iTunes, on our website and listen on Stitcher, uh, everywhere um, that you listen to podcasts, or you can ask Alexa to play at the strategy hour and she will. Uh, we have over 300 episodes and we're still dropping content twice a week. It's every Tuesday and Thursday. Every other episode you'll hear from me and Abby kind of breaking down a strategy that we've learned and are teaching in our own business. And then the other episodes you'll hear from a guest and a strategy that they've learned in their business that's moved their needle. Yeah, and I, I highly recommend you guys listening to them because what I love about you guys is you all are completely transparent. What works, yes. what doesn't work. You, know, you guys share numbers. You're like, you know, and some and people need to yes. hear that in order for yes. them to kind of understand the business of like selling. So thank you 100%. for all that amazing content. Yes. <laughs> and thanks for coming on to the podcast. Oh my gosh, yes. I've had so much fun. Thank you for having me. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Definitely head on over to nishaysnow.com slash boss project to sign up for the free product powerhouse summit and to have a listen to my presentation. I'll be featured on the first day. So I would really, really love your support. You can head on over to the show notes, nishaysnow.com slash 77. It will have a link to the Product Powerhouse Summit, but also to the other companies that she mentioned, like Black Curl Magic and uh, Jordan Jordanae. Okay, I could have murdered that, but it's it's over at, on the show notes. The link. It's a it's a pretty cool site. Uh, but anywho, I hope you guys are inspired by this. What Emily and Abigail have done is pretty impressive. We didn't really go into the numbers in this particular episode, but Think Create Collective uh, was a multi six figure business. And I know now that they've transitioned over to boss project using some of those same strategies that she talked about today is going to continue to help them generate, you know, wealth. So I just love what they're doing. They're really an inspiration to, I feel like women who are looking to start their own business. And so I hope that it has inspired you to follow your dreams and follow your passions. All right. Hope to see you at the summit. Well, you know, virtually anyway, take care. Bye. Bye.